both plants and animals. Many scientists consider this one of the most pressing concerns for saving endangered species. The most serious problems have, have, have historically been on islands, where uh, the species on islands uh, evolved in the absence of, of, of most carnivores, for example, uh, most natural enemies, with very few competitors. So they're over the thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of years that they, they've evolved on islands, they lost a lot of their intrinsic defenses. When you um, look at island ecosystems, you know, as the, as the name implies, it's a system. And if you have even one species that's eliminated, you know, within that system, it's going to affect the whole system. You know, even one species, let alone several species, let alone, say, all seabird species. You know, that ecosystem is altered forever. No one knows for sure how the rats got onto Anacapa, although some think it was from a gold rush steamer that ran aground. What we believe happened is that rats uh, got to the island initially when the Winfield Scott went aground uh, along uh, the north shore of Middle Anacapa Island uh, in, the 18, in the late 1800s. And it was that shipwreck uh, that was the primary source of rats that had initially colonized the uh, Anacapa Island. But given that a single pair of rats can theoretically produce over 5,000 offspring in just one year, it was clear that eradicating them would be a significant challenge. A challenge taken up by the Island Conservation and Ecology Group, a non-profit environmental organization dedicated to conserving biodiversity on islands through the removal of non-native species. Rats alone are responsible for about half of all bird and reptile extinctions. I think 40 to 60 percent of bird and reptile extinctions were caused by introduced rats on islands. So it's this huge problem. The eradication of rats from islands is not new. It's been carried out on about 75 plus islands worldwide. And it's been carried out successfully since about 1986. The trick though is to get every last rat and to make sure that you get every last rat. What's new about Anacapa is uh, being able to remove the rats on such a topographically difficult island to work on because of the steep and ruggedness of the island. So there's a few holes. Given the difficult terrain and the need for 100% extermination, the team decided to apply a specially formulated rodenticide via helicopter. Starting with the eastern islet the first year, and then the Middle and Western Islets the following year. The Anacap Island Restoration Project is the first time that an aerial broadcast of rodenticide has been done in, in North America. And it was not your typical restoration project, so it required all the agencies involved to do their homework and to really consider all the impacts and all the variables that could influence the success of the project. One of the primary concerns was how to minimize the impact of the rodenticide on the island ecosystem. The team has taken careful steps to evaluate and preserve the native island species during the eradication. Holly Gellerman has spent two years monitoring the native deer mice on the island. 18.5. We want to know what, how the mice are functioning as a population before the bait drop. and because we're expecting a decline, because they'll be affected by the same bait as the rats are if in the short term, and then afterwards we'll continue monitoring and just to make sure that they're back to normal and back to what we expected. As insurance, native mice are held in a protected shed until the rodenticide application is finished. The mice will then be released in the spring, after the bait is no longer effective and they can forage for themselves to help re-establish their population levels. Also at risk are the island's birds of prey that feed on rodents. To address this concern, the raptors are captured and removed both before and immediately after the application of the bait. We're attempting to capture all the, all the birds of prey, especially the species of special concern, and the ones that are most likely to uh, feed on carrion uh, that has, uh, has some of the poison bait in it. Brian and his team spend several weeks capturing birds of prey, occasionally using a great horned owl to flush them out. So far we've caught three birds, uh, two peregrine falcons and one red-tailed hawk, and they're still 
one peregrine, uh, three red tail hawks, and a couple of burrowing owls, and two barn owls that we know of. So we're inventorying as we're trapping and uh, trying to get all the birds uh, accounted for. Other precautions include monitoring the endangered California brown pelicans, which marine ecologist Frank Gress has been researching for the past 25 years. Brown pelicans eat almost exclusively 100% anchovy and sardines. There's no way they're going to be picking up a rat or anything else. The possible effects of the helicopter drop and just human activity and lots of people out there, that kind of concern me. But again, as far as pelicans or cormorants, that's not that much of a concern because of the time of year. The team also had to make sure that the bait would not adversely impact the marine environment. Yeah, we were quite concerned about the potential negative impacts in the marine ecosystem. We first started to look at what the potential effects could be. Uh, we, we conducted some research uh, presenting uh, non-toxic bait to fish to see if fish would be interested in our bait. Uh, they were not interested in any of the bait that we presented, uh, thus eliminating them potentially moving the, the chemical into the food chain. Despite all the preparation and the support of many environmental organizations, including the National Audubon Society and American Bird Conservancy, the project was not without controversy, particularly from animal rights activists. Animal rights people are very concerned, and rightfully so, with suffering of individuals. But when these animals are let loose on nature, then uh, we have this conflict between the rights of the individual rat to go around eating eggs of s nesting seabirds, for example, or the right of the seabirds to exist, to persist in nature at all. And the rats aren't in any danger. Rats are all over the world, but seabirds only nest on a few islands. And if we eliminate those places, then uh, all the generations of that species in the future will be gone. To some people it might seem kind of extreme, but rats are everywhere. This is where merlets nest. You know, they have a very restricted range. They're, they're going to nest here or they're not going to nest anywhere. And so I, I don't think it's radical at all. I'd much rather see a lot of merlets here than a lot of rats. Bringing the conflict to a head just prior to the application of the rodenticide, animal rights groups sought a court injunction, alleging that the project had not complied with federal regulations. This delays the project for a month during a critical time. The project has been planned for not only a low point in the annual population cycle of the rats, but it's also an optimum time because most of the migratory species that would utilize Anacapa Island have moved on or haven't arrived for the winter. While the team waits on the island to proceed, a federal judge in Washington, D.C. reviews the case. It was really useful that there was a lot of experts from outside of our agency that were able to speak with knowledge that eradicating the rats was the best and most important action that we could take in order to protect those species, the, the native species on Anacapa Island. Since it is a first in the United States, it's under the microscope. In conversations with, uh, with the public and with uh, uh, other biologists who have had concerns about this eradication effort, I've oftentimes pointed out that 50 years from now, when you look at, at an island like Anacapa Island, I think it's going to be overwhelming, that it'll be better with rats off the island than it will uh, with rats on it. We're all concerned that this action that we take not have negative long-term impacts on the island. And the courts concluded with us that, indeed, we have uh, looked very carefully and very critically at this project that we've proposed. And we were approved to move forward. Finally, after years of preparation, on a cool, clear December day, the bait is brought onto the island and the application takes place. Today with the helicopter we're working the cliff sides first, uh, completing the cliff sides, and then moving on to top of the island. The bait is loaded into a large dispenser to accurately broadcast the pellets using a specially designed deflector to minimize the spread of the bait into the marine environment. 